this video we're continuing with the Repairing Your Knits series and we're going to talk about patching in this video. If you'd like to see the other, at least one video in the series, go ahead and click the I in the upper right hand corner to see that playlist. Um, for now we're going to talk about patching. In, in the last video, darning, um, uh, I explained that darning is a really good way to reinforce a threadbare area. It doesn't look as good as knitting because it's weaving over knitting. And patching is um, another good repair, but it ends up looking a lot better, not quite as reinforced as darning. So that's kind of the, the decision you have to make when you're thinking about pat, uh, repairing something is do you want a super reinforced thing that doesn't look as good or is not as reinforced uh, repair that looks a lot better. So. We're going to talk about patching in this one. And this video is sponsored by Eucalan. That's why I have these five little bottles of soap in front of me. Eucalan is the soap that I have used as long as I can remember. They are The smell of Eucalan is the smell of clean knits to me. And the reason I have five little bottles in front of me is because they have five different scents, or there's, there's unscented. Let's see if I can do this. There's unscented and eucalyptus and grapefruit and jasmine and lavender. Yes, and I'll tell you, if someone is sensitive to smells, you have the unscented, of course, but the um, lavender and the grapefruit are both really mild scents. The eucalyptus is a bit stronger. It's still a nice natural scent. And the, um, the jasmine is called rapture, W-R-A-P-T-U-R-E. This is what, this is my thing right now, is I've been using this one. And it's a little bit more perfumey. It is a beautiful smell. It's, it's the one that I'm really into. Anyway, this is really, really the wool soap that I use um, in my knits for myself and my family and my business. Very much trusted. It's a no rinse wash. It's also safe to use on other delicates. So they're sponsoring this video. Thank you very much, Euclid. And we will, um, we can look forward to more from Euclid coming up. But right now, we're talking about patching. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is what I'm talking about. This is a little patch over a big hole. And there are a couple different things. I, I've worked on a couple different ways of, of demonstrating patching. And this is the first one where I've picked up live stitches and knit over the hole. And this is not steamed out, and I've used a different color of yarn, but you can see that this ends up looking a lot better than darning, just for the fact that it's knitting. And this is one where, I'm going to demonstrate on this one, I've got a big quote-unquote moth hole here, and I have picked up stitches rather than um, retrieving live stitches, and this is the edge I get. You can see you get a neater edge if you actually put your needle through live stitches than if you pick up stitches from the fabric. And then I knit this patch and I'm going to show you how to uh, finish it off. And again, I'm using a different color and this isn't steamed out, but you can see if you were using the same color and, and you blocked this, um, because the patch, you see, tries to accordion itself up, so <clears throat> you can also stitch down the sides. Now this is one I actually worked on. I created a giant hole. I created a giant hole in the net. We're talking like getting too close to the campfire kind of a hole. And then I did this patch imagining that, um, well actually this is upside down. I did this patch imagining that um, this is like on the front of my sweater and I'm trying to do the neatest job possible. This is, this is the neatest possible job I could end up doing for a giant hole. Of course look better on a smaller hole, but this, this is what you get. This is what patching is like. And you can also just always just knit a patch and sew it on. You always have that option. These are actually patches that are worked in. So the first thing I want to show you is, um, well, let's make a disaster first. Let's pretend that, um, we'll just pretend that it's moths this time. Okay, so I've got this bad moth hole. And my first option, the one option that I showed you on the yellow sample, is to pick up stitches around, sorry, I'm having a hard time finding the end of my yarn. Pick up stitches below the hole and then knit a patch up that way. So that's what I'm going to do the first way here. Um, there's my hole. I'm going to go one stitch to the right and actually it's smarter to go lower than that I think 
because that stitch could have pulled out because the stitch above it was not stable. And I actually want to pick up the left leg going across. Usually we're always picking up the right leg of the V. I want to pick up the left leg this time so the stitches are mounted correctly. And DPNs are good for this because there are little bits of knitting. I'm going to attach my yarn by knitting across. And then I'm going to purl. And I'm showing you a repair in stockinette, but if you have a different uh, stitch going on in the fabric, you can try different things and see what looks best. If you, It may look best to have a stockinette patch. It may look best to have a visible repair. I mean, there is, I think, some charm to, um, to showing a visible repair like the ones I have here. Okay, I wanted to demonstrate that. You're, you can knit up and finish that patch, and I'm going to show you how to finish the patch, but first I want to show you how to, how to do this with the live stitches. Actually, I want to create more of a mess. Oh, that's a good enough mess. What I want to do is um, pull on the little extra bits of yarn that are kind of in the way, and I can trim them so I can really see what I have here. And this is really what I have, with no extra bits of yarn in there. So these are my three live stitches that I can pick up. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to pick up two stitches on the right, and then insert my needle through the live stitches, and then pick up two stitches on the left. And the reason that I was able to do that is once I, once I cleaned up the area and I could see my live stitches, um, yeah, there, there was nothing else interfering, and I could see what I had. This, of course, will be more difficult to do if the area is threadbare or felted, um, or if the stitches are really small. But this is what I have, and then you end up working it just like the other one after that. It's difficult to match up the, um, the live stitches on top. So my, with all of the little patches I did, my choice was to, um, to just knit over those stitches and not try to actually line and not, um, it didn't look as good. It wasn't very easy to actually get these stitches to match up exactly with those stitches. It's better just to cover the hole. So, and trust me, I cut up so many swatches of, of, <laughs> of knitting to bring this tutorial to you. Now to finish up the top, um, this is, this is how the top looks when you're finished. You can just bind off and seam it down. I found that that didn't look all that great. So break the yarn and get a tapestry needle and then match up where your patch is going to go. You figure out, you know, follow up the row of stitches to figure out exactly how your patch matches up. And my patch, I already marked that I want to um, this stitch right here matches up with the stitch on the needle. So I'm going to <clears throat> go through the stitch on the needle and down into the, the, the center of the V of that stitch. This, I don't know that this is a technique that, um, whoops, you know what, I think I did this backwards. Let me think for a sec. No, it's fine. And then I'm going to come up from behind the next stitch and off of here and back down in to that same spot. Anyway, what I was saying is I'm sure there are different ways of doing this just with all of the experiments that I did in the best way to finish off, to pick up the stitches or start with those stitches and then finish off the, the, the top. This is the one that I found was the easiest, the biggest bang for your buck, let's say. So that's what you're going to do all the way across, and that's what I have done here. And then on this one, I whip stitched along the side here, and this side I didn't. 
And I actually, I prefer the look of it not whip stitched. If you can live with it that way, um, if, you, if you're not worried, if, if the patch isn't so big that you're worried it's going to catch on something, I think it looks pretty good open. And if it's wool, it's going to kind of felt to itself anyway. I did a neat job on the whip stitching and just it didn't end up looking that great when I was finished. And then the last thing you can do, especially if you're using a non-wool yarn, is you, um, you might want to find anything live back here or any place that you can secure anything just to make sure that it's not going to unravel anymore. If it's, you know, wool is the easiest to repair. Um, it's the easiest to repair and it's the easiest to, uh, once the repair is in, to trust that the repair is not going to go anywhere. Uh, but this is something you might want to do just to be sure or if you're using um, something that isn't 100% wool. Okay, you can secure it on the back and then keep the front looking nice. Well, once I finish off those few. So that is how to make a patch. Again, the stitches, you can actually match a stitch combination or a cable or whatever. Um, there are a billion combinations. And for a lot of the things that I did, a lot of the ripping up and repairing that I did, um, I would find that there was something that seemed like it was going to work and then I modified it a little bit to match something. You might not get the repair just the way you want it the first time if, if your goal is to make it look as good as possible. So you might want to try a stockinette patch or over seed stitch or a seed stitch patch over seed stitch, you know, different things or to match up the yarn, not match up the yarn. Um, th all of those things I just said in combination with the option of darning the, the hole in the work that's a lot of options. Anyway, I hope this helps to get your brain on the right track for maybe some different ideas for repairing your knits. Um, and I look forward to adding more videos in this series in the future. And many thanks to Yucalan um, Fiberwash for sponsoring this video. Good luck.